In this video, uh, we're going to use the magic of convolution reverb to make your bass um, guitar recordings sound proper good. Sound like uh, they've been recorded using any rig you can think of. Well, not any rig. Any, any rig you can get your hands on, basically. Um, and I'll give you a link to a load of really nice uh, bass rigs that you can put on your bass guitar recordings and make them sound like properly good. Properly good. Let's go. Hello everybody, hope everyone is well. Um, lately I have been recording a lot of bass uh, with this Yamaha bass. Um, mostly using the P, P bass pickups, I'll be honest. Um, I'm working on a little EP, I guess you'd call it, um, using only analog mono synths. Um, and the way that the vibe was going, I thought oh, I'll track some bass and a little bit guitar as well. Uh, and the results are pretty, pretty interesting. I like them. I like them. I like them a lot. So that's what I've been working on at the moment. And that's that's really close to being putting out there into the world. Um, but because I'm in the sort of mixing stage, uh, the question came to me, how can I make my bass sound proper good um and yeah the magic of convolution reverb is the <laughs> is well is an answer to that to, to, to that question another answer is be a better bass player but since i can't be that um i'll rely on technology to help me um so that's what we're doing today i'm going to show you um how to use bass rig um, impulse responses to make your bass lines sound proper good. Uh, we're going to do it all in Reaper because uh, that's what I use but any convolution reverb plug-in should be able to do this. Um, yeah um, if you're new here hello I know there's a few 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 of you are new here. Um, lovely to see you. Um, we mostly play with synths and can you bass and occasionally guitar here. So yeah today we are doing convolution reverb impulse responses for bass. Second time's a charm using the right mic. Bing. So how did I record the bass uh, for my little EP that I've been doing in the basement? Well, the first thing I did is I skim read this book uh, Behind the Glass by Howard Massey. What Howard Massey has done is basically gone and interviewed a load of famous producers um, like George Martin, Tony Visconti, Nile Rogers, Steve Levine, to name a few. He's basically said, how do you do this? including how do you record bass okay and it seems the the the, the emerging theme of just you can see all my, all my bookmarks here about, about recording bass is either DIing the bass uh, direct injection or DI the bass and mix in an amp signal like so you've got you know a head and a cab set up and then mic that but they also have the DI signal. So so DI box, I mean, you can get cheap DI boxes. That's that's one of my DI boxes. These are about 30 or 40 quid. And bass goes in, XLR out into your mixer. Really, really simple. Um, so, you know, super clean, dry signal. And obviously you can put effects on it post in, in, in the box or, or, yeah, probably in the box these days, obviously. Um, but you miss any character that you'd get from like, oh, I've got a, you know, vintage cabinet, you know, two by four, blah de blah de blah, with a vintage Ampeg head. So obviously you miss that. So if we could do that in our little basement studios for like zero cost, how cool would that be? Um, I'm just going to take an entry at random here, uh, give you an idea of what people say. Do, so presumably you typically record a bass amp track always both along with a DI. So there we go, DI says John Leckie. Um, let's take another one. I should have marked this. Do you have a favourite DI box? Of, oh, hang on. When you record bass, do you take a DI signal or amp signal or both? Always DI. I can't be bothered with an amplifier. Says uh, Alan Parsons. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Um, do, 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 do. You're a bass player, so I'm particularly interested in the approach you take towards recording bass. I'll split the bass and record both DI and amp. So there you go, so they've got a sort of a dual approach going on there. 
from Tony Visconti, none other than. So what's apparent from like having a look at this book, which is amazing, by the way, everyone should have this book. He's got a little studio, um, a lot of DI bass recording going on and then some people recording a DI and recording amp. So as I say, if we could do that in our little basement studio for like no money, how cool would that be? Um, I don't have a good bass cabinet. Um, I have a new head, a fair, fairly OK head, um, but which which I did use. So let's take a look at what I did use to record my bass and then let's show you the secret sauce that can make your bass sound like anything. This is the um, I mean, it's just a sort of a head, right, um, that I use to record my bass. BXR 1800H. Uh, <laughs> it's another Behringer. Um, I mean, this is this is already yeah officially a legacy product. Um, I've had this about ten years, maybe a bit less. Um, it's okay. It's okay. Just for a laugh, I looked at people reviewing this. It actually doesn't get doesn't get too such such a bad review from four people, four point seven. So, the secret sauce we're going to use um, is essentially it's it's the cousin of convolution reverb. So, in twenty seconds, convolution reverb. Basically, you can go to a space like a church or a cave or a fish tank, a massive one, and you can record the sort of reverb characteristics of that. And there are loads of uh, videos on YouTube people doing this people showing you how to do this you know you make a sound and you record it then i think you use something called fast Fourier transform um and then you can put that in a piece of software and then the reverb will recreate that reverb based on the space you have sampled it's like sampling spaces um crazy yeah that's the thing that's the thing um but you can do that for space. So yeah, convolution reverb. Uh, and I use that all the time. I've got a load of impulse responses from various rooms around the world, <laughs> literally. Um, it's great. But you can do the same thing with, well, guitar amps and cabinets and bass amps and cabinets. Um, so I've, I've, I've occasionally done this or, or, or played with this with guitar. I never really thought it sounded great to be honest um i mean i've got a korg multi-effects unit down there which has very good um amp modeling which i like um so yeah but i thought oh i forgot all these bass lines i've recorded for these seven tracks Ooh. do a bit of get a bit of bass irs and yeah if you search google search google bass irs uh, impulse responses, bass cabinet, whatever, you will get a ton of resources out there. Um, I'll show you the one I use. So so when I search bass I, IRs or wherever I search for, the first hit I got was this site, uh, Laptop Guitarist, which I've never seen before, but it's pretty cool. There are a ton of guitar cabinet impulse responses out there when it comes to bass cabs, not so much. Although actually, this collection here is, is great. Here's a collection of bass, blah, 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 blah. Um, and these are all of the the irs that are available so a lot of good stuff here high watt orange um no marshalls but then obviously marshall's a bit more sort of guitar -y world in it trace elliot ampeg oh there's there's marshall cabinets um and i know because i've because i've downloaded all of these that these come with various microphone combinations and this this is the site so i think this is a, this is a you know a functioning studio basically but and there's yeah there's, there's a vox ac30 there for guitarist out there um and then here we here we here comes all the bass stuff a lot a lot of good stuff so so shout out to these guys um shout out to laptop guitarist okay so how can i use these impulse responses well i'm going to show you um how we do this in uh, reaper um there are various convolution reverb programs out there likely there's there'll be free ones as well um but you know i work entirely in reaper so i'm going to show you the reaper uh, way of doing it um this is my stem mix of a track i'm working on 
uh, this is the base, the blue one. So I'm, what I'll do is I'll show you how, how to set this up from first principles if you've already downloaded. So from that site, uh, there's, there's basically a load of zip files. So just unzip the files into a folder somewhere on your hard drive. And the thing you need to do in Reaper or the convolution reverb is handled by Reverb, which is which is a it's, it's, it's a convolution reverb. Um, which is actually, um, uh, you know, incredible that as part of the standard Reaper setup, you, you get a convolution reverb, um, which has got, you know, actually a shit load of bells and whistles. Um, anyway, it's really simple in this response, you know, it's impulse response generation. Go to add. Uh, you're adding a file. You've downloaded it. There's various options here, which I haven't even delved into, delved, dived into, delved into dived into i haven't i've just <laughs> anyway now i've already got this um on base rigs uh my favorite at the moment well for this work is this ampeg v4b custom with a u87 number two i think that's so i know whether that's a sort of i think head ampeg head a custom cabinet and then the U87 is a microphone because if you look at some of the other how that how yeah so the SM7 so 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 it seems to be head cabinet microphone so you can see there's a lot you know there's a lot of different um, lot 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 of different sort of combinations here um, I mean I mean look at this look at this you know. I mean, and to be honest, I picked this one. It sounded good, so I went with it. Anyway, let's hear it. See, you can see I've got the original one. Let's hear. The, and uh, so the bass, yes, yeah, so it was DI'd. I have got reverb on it from like the pre-stem. Um, and now there's just a little bit of EQ on it, just a little bit of cut there. Oh, that's interesting. There's some, there's some multiband uh, compression, which... That should just be a normal compressor. Interesting anyway. And that's just like a channel strip, just so I can do some um, some just attenuating the volume. Well, actually, yeah. This is already set up. The important thing with this is to set zero latency monitoring. Um, if you don't have this, uh, you'll, you'll get some weird latency effects. So that's important. And it was turned off for some reason. Hmm. Um, right. Anyway. Um, also, I'm setting it to be entirely wet. So, I, you know, I, I don't want to hear any of the, well, you know, I mean, obviously I can, you know, I can have a bit of the dry signal and a bit of, you know, I've got that flexibility, but I'm using it entirely wet. So let's hear the bass uh, just as without the sort of IR stuff going on. So obviously, you know, pretty dry. There's no kind of delay or phasing or anything crazy going on like that. So now I'll kick in the uh, the rear verb. <laughs> Boom. And I'm like, and you may be thinking, dude, it's just louder. <laughs> I don't know. I think it does. It is changing the character. I mean, for me, just giving it just, just, yeah, hard to, hard to define, just oomph. Um, if we hear it in the mix, just with the guitar track and the drum track, um, without. Which is all right, but then you click in the, the convolution reverb. I 
don't know. I just, I just think for, for free, let's face it, that is really beefing up the bass. Um, I like it a lot. And, and, the, and the thing is, you know, just from that one site, you can download the, all these various um, versions. So let's just go back a bit and you can just, just cycle through them. Okay, I'm putting an effect on there. <laughs> let's, go, let's go back. That's a nice, that's nice, that's nice. Again, that's a nice one and what you know what I'm seeing in this list in addition just to the various heads and, and, and cabinets I'm seeing a lot of nice mics here uh, NT, that's a, NT2 that's a road if I'm not very much mistaken that U87 I think these these this is the one I like I'm sure that's a nice um, is that Sony expensive Sony microphone um, TE, I'm not sure what that one is. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a microphone expert. Beta 52, I think that's a sure. Obviously, the SM57 is there. Uh, yeah, SM57 down here. You know, and you know, because we have the ability to just you know do all this in the box you know we i don't know we can do all kinds of crazy stuff you could you know you could duplicate the track and have one cab mic set up on one and then on another i mean let's just add i don't know this will probably it's a bit of a stupid experiment let's add let's just you know add in another one let's add in i don't know pick one at, pick one at random Be the original signal as well. Wow, having to see having two sounds sounds really good. Day. thanks for watching uh folks uh if you want to like and share that would be fine um sorry it's a bit of a longer one and i think we're getting into 20 minutes but you know there's there's a, there's a lot there it's like you know if you've never heard a convolution reverb you kind of have to sort of set the scene and i wanted to sort of set the scene of how i set the bass up that you were hearing which then had the convolution reverb put on so sorry what i'll try and do is i'll try i'll do markers in in the description and i'll put the links to the resources um i've used as well in the description there all right cheers folks cheerio